Oh. All right. Uh, thank you, ladies, for coming to Wisdom's Table. And um, let's go ahead and open up in prayer before we get into our uh, hot topic. Let me let Marcy in, and then we, I will open up in prayer. All right. While she's uh, connecting to audio, let's go ahead and pray, ladies. Lord, we lift up this time to you, Father. We ask you to um, just guide our this Bible study. I believe that you've guided me through uh, the outline and preparation of my notes, but still want definitely want your your hand in this uh, time together, your hand in this lesson. <clears throat> Open up our minds and our hearts to receive what you want us to to learn from this. Our desire. Um, with every, every week with wisdom's table, but it should be our desire in every day of our life that we gain wisdom, Father. Wisdom from you, uh, which we can find in your word. And that's what we want to open, uh, what, that's what we want to do. And our desire is to, excuse me, let April in. Our desire to discuss church girl, um, not, not just the song, not just Beyonce, Father, but what do you want us as Christian women, after your own heart, what do you want us to gain? What, how can we learn from this kind of situation? Excuse me. Um, so that's that's what we're asking, Father. We thank you just for this time. Um, thank you for your presence in our midst. And we love you, Lord, and we dedicate this time to you. Bless every every woman here and every woman that will hear this lesson. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Hi, everybody that we haven't said hi to yet. Hello. 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 Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, just uh, want to pray first to just lift up, write down um, a couple of people to pray for, and that's uh, Miss Sherry. Mm -hmm. uh, she, I believe, had a um, you know, medical um, procedure done this week, so just lift her up, and also Sister Yvette. Um, uh, Yvette Brown and uh, lift her up. Um, she has several different health issues, as as most of us know. But um, the big prayer, the, all of it, you know, we want the Lord's perfect will regarding her healing. And uh, same with Sherry, but also for Yvette, uh, she and her husband are trying to uh, get her a kidney transplant. He, her husband's. Uh, wants to donate one of his kidneys and so it's just a long procedure and, um so i'm sorry somebody say something vivian agreeing with you oh yes okay i just thought maybe because your family you know, with the browns i thought maybe you had an update but that's fine but yes uh so thank you yvette brown and and sherry jones and of course um you know if you we always welcome prayer uh, prayer requests as well we don't spend time with that um uh, with wisdom's table um uh, want to do that as the lord leads but so uh, this is not to the neglect of anybody else that may have some prayer requests feel free to um put them in the chat if you'd like or uh you know a private message me if you'd like um but we are definitely uh praying people <laughs> for sure so um and let me see okay um want to welcome uh Yvonne, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne. Everybody, and it's just me and Yvonne that got the got the memo about being on camera, but that's okay. <laughs> no stress, no pressure at all, except on uh, Yvonne and me. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me get my. Uh, okay. Uh, better. <laughs> anyway, welcome everyone. Um, so we just, uh, uh, we have opened up in prayer. This is part two of a study on church girl reflections. That's what I've entitled this church girl reflections, walking the talk so that the word of God be not blasphemed. And uh, that, that be not blasphemed, that is based on Titus 2, verse 5, um, but I'd like to read that as a foundational uh, scripture. Hopefully my phone will not die on me as I'm doing this, but let's turn there. 
uh, to Ephesians 5. Um, excuse me, it's not Ephesians 5. We'll, we probably will read <laughs> Ephesians 5 at some point this evening, Lord willing. But Titus 2, starting at verse 3. Um, Lisa, can I ask you a huge favor? Could you read those, um, those three scriptures while I go get my regular Bible? Because this isn't working too well. Can you read those three scriptures for me? Sure, sure. I'll be okay. right back. So I'm going to be reading Titus 2, 3 through 5. I have the new King James Version. And it says, the older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Thank you, Lisa. So yes, yeah, that last part, that the word of God be not blasphemed. That I cannot emphasize that enough, that we as daughters of God and fellow heirs with Christ, we really uh, need to be aware of that scripture and think about what that means. Do we, as daughters of God, really want to open up the, go the gospel, open up the word of God to be cheapened, maligned? Uh, what were some of the other words that we came up with or saw that last week in different translations? blasphemed etc um and so that's why we're focusing in on church girl um why bother right why do we even bother with this it's it's because beyonce is seen no she's worshipped as a champion for women she's she's seen as a champion for women's empowerment for women's liberation for women's identity, for women's sexuality. People who look to her, including young girls and women, look to Beyonce to, to, and kind of want to model their, their life and their attitude after what she exudes, what her, her um, personality is, what, how she presents herself as an entertainer and as a celebrity. Um, and even she's seen as a leader in a lot of ways. Now, again, as I said last week, I want to emphasize this again tonight that this study is not about bashing Beyonce per se. It's about, although there, it's not like we want to bash Beyonce. We don't know her personally, but it's more, um, it's not, it, it's fine. We're going to see that God, that God calls us to expose the un, unfruitful works of the world of evil, right? But it's more about because of that influence and because that influence is a worldly influence <clears throat> and because there are a lot of Christians who defend her, have defended her with church girl, um, partner with her um, in music um, as in with the, the song Church Girl at the very beginning, it samples a Clark's, uh, Clark's sister song, um, Center of Thy Will. Um, but it's, it's more about Beyonce's message and her persona on stage. It, it takes nothing away from her talent, her creativity, her business savvy as a singer, as a performer, and as a, an entertainer. Okay, but it's I love what T Teresa said last week and also what Sherry said towards the end of our session. Um, and I really want us to think about this topic in terms of, of what was said. And it's mainly does, as Christians, everything we, we expose ourselves to, everything we, we talk about, and I don't mean literally everything. We can talk about coffee. Coffee has nothing to do <laughs> with Jesus, right? It's, it's, it's you know neither here nor there. So I don't mean literally everything we talk about. But it's, when it comes to our attitudes about life, about people, about God, about each other, <clears throat> about our relationships, it's like, Lord, what do you want? Do everything is unto the Lord, okay? And one of the most important things in that regard is 
does what I do, what I listen to, what I like, what my added, does it point to Jesus Christ? Does it point myself and my focus on Christ through the thing, the way I live my life, the way I think, the way I love, the way I interact, the way I, you know, stand up to trials and tribulations. I mean, everything that I do, is it Christ-centered? Is it Christ-focused? And does it turn other people, does it point other people to Christ? And um, and that's what why we want to discuss this. It's, it's not only do we not want to open up the word of God to be blasphemed, we also want to show the light of Christ and, and teach each other, hey, you know, and kind of nudge each other, hold each other accountable. We're going to talk about that as well, um, to shine the light of Christ. And something like Church Girl, um, where you have a, and I'm going to say it, a worldly entertainer um, telling church girls that it's okay to let it loose. It's okay to party. It's okay to be a thoughty. We're going to re, uh, review our glossary from last week and what does that mean, right? But is it okay? Um, she's saying it is okay. She's saying in this song and, and of course other, other aspects of her music, do you. Do you? We're going to talk about that some more tonight, but and and that's a problem. Let's. We're going to look at a lot of scriptures. I'm going to take my time. I do want to get through uh, tonight. We want to talk about. Well, last last week we talked about the lyrics. There are seven things I want to cover in this in this you know survey of church girl reflections. The lyrics, which we talked about last week. The lie and the reality, which we'll talk about tonight. The warning, the opportunity that we have, the heart related to this. Now, I'm not talking about good heart, bad heart, but I'm talking about our heart for Christ, our love for God and what he means to us and what we as his daughters mean to him. And we'll see, uh, Lord willing, how that relates to uh, the problem with church girl. Uh, then there's the duty. And then lastly, the goal. So again, as I said, we talked about the lyrics last week. Um, well, first, there's two scriptures I want, I want to read. Um, and as I say, every time I, your pastor, any Bible teacher, a meme, <laughs> wherever you see somebody referencing scripture, a verse or a passage, write it down, you know, be a Berean, write it down. If it's the word of God, you know, go ahead and, and willfully take it in, but also go back on your own, look it up and look at the, look it up in context. The who, what, when, where, why, how of the passage, verse or passage that you've been given so you can better understand what God is trying to say. We want to exegete the scriptures, which means to pull out of the scriptures what God has intended and not do eisegesis, which is reading into the scriptures and filtering through our preconceived notions, what our favorite pastor says, what our favorite guru says, or meme, or Sister Laurel or whoever, <laughs> you know, it's, it, we want to uh, rightly divide the word of truth and it takes reading um, and studying things in their proper context. I can't, um, in a study like this, I can't give you um, the full context. I'm not doing a verse by verse exposition, just doing topical. So please um, write these scriptures down as I give them and then, um, read them and study them on your own in fuller context. The first scripture I wanted to look at is Ephesians 5, verse 6. And I'm going to read a good portion of this, but um, it really drives the point home. So I am reading from my trusty, dusty uh, KJV. I, I am not KJV only. Some Christians are. But I'm not, this is just the Bible that I've had for many years and it 
works for me until I get a new one. Okay. So Ephesians chapter five, starting at verse six, and I'm going to read through verse 17. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not therefore partakers with them, for you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the spirit is, is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatever whatsoever does make manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake uh, thou that sleepest, arise from the dead and Christ shall give you light. Verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, uh, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Okay, this is this is why we're we're doing studies on on things like this. This uh, Church Girl and the Renaissance album and and Beyonce and you know all all the other entertainers and and celebrities and leaders in this world that she represents. This is why we want to be true. We are children of light. Let's think, act, uh, relate in in terms of in terms of that. And then um, going back, Romans thirteen. Romans chapter 13, I want to read there for a minute, second, won't read as long of a passage. Romans 13, starting at verse 11, and I'm going to read to verse 14. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their through their falls, <clears throat> salvation is coming to the Gentiles. I want to make sure I'm in the right place. That's, I'm sorry, that's not 13. <laughs> sorry. Um, 13 starting at verse 11, <clears throat> excuse me, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. There's that, that light again. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to, to fulfill the lust thereof. Now, I'm not going to read, I'm not going to put us through the torture of reading the, the lyrics again. I read them last week. You can Google them if you haven't already. Um, but I just, just uh, as part of this review from last week, um, I just want to review a couple of our glossary terms from the song. So first we learned what a thoughty is. So, so the song talks about repeat, it repeats it over and over and over again. I'm going to drop it like a thoughty. Well, we learned last week, for those of us who didn't know, I went to Urban Dictionary and a couple of other um, websites to uh, give me the meaning of the slang term thoughty. And it comes from thought, T-H-O-T, -T, which is an acronym for that. And excuse my language, by the way, ladies, we just, I just keep it real. I'm not going to curse, but I'm just going to, you know, whatever I can say, I'm just going to say it, okay? But thought is an acronym, T-H-O-T, -T, that hoe over there. So the song is telling, telling church girls, you know, basically, hey, you know, be a thoughty, drop it like a thoughty. That's how the lyric goes. Um, it, it's basically a promiscuous female or otherwise known, and that's, I'm reading straight from urbandictionary.com, promiscuous female otherwise known as a slut, whore, or hoe bag, a female who very much enjoys sex. So that's how Urban Dictionary defines the word thoughty. Let me put a pin there and say, married women, 
you are encouraged to very much enjoy sex in marriage okay, to, with your husband. Okay, so I just want to make sure it's clear. We're not, you know, it's not saying a thought, you're not a thoughty if you're, <laughs> you're, if you're a godly woman, monogamous woman married to your husband and you guys enjoy sex. Okay, <clears throat> that's not a thoughty. Uh, then another uh, term is twerk. And the verb is to dance to popular music in a sexually provocative manner involving thrusting hip movements and a low squatting stance. Now I'm just pulling words. We're just looking at words that are in the lyrics of Church Girl, okay? Um, so that's all, that's all we're doing right now. The next term is buss it. And this is another thing that the song, the lyrics repeat over and over and over and over again. Bus it, B-U-S-S, -S, and then I-T. And I did, I had to dig a little bit deeper, but there are like, there's a lot of words, you know, in English and probably in other languages, but in English that used to have one meaning back in the day, whenever, like the word gay. Now it means something completely different than in the days of the, of the movies in 1940s and whatever, you know. It means something, it doesn't mean happy anymore. It means homo, reference of homosexual. That's almost exclusively, exclusively the way it's used in our culture. So bus it, and it may, people may still use it to mean like just to kiss somebody. But now it's short for bust it open. Bust it open and it's referring to a woman's butt or vagina. Um, and then I read this, um, there's another, I can't, I didn't, I should have written it down, but I didn't write down the, the uh, website, but, uh, there, it was a website where people can contribute to defining a, a slang word, like, oh, it means this, you know, so it's like user generated content. So somebody said it, it's similar to twerking. It's about letting your freak, this, I'm just quoting, letting your freak nasty flag fly freely typically in the vicinity of the opposite sex. So when I saw that, and sorry, I'm repeating it because it vexes, it vexes me, but letting your freak nasty flag fly freely, say that 10 times fast, um, is very much another you know, part of the anthem, I'm gonna call it, the anthem of church girl. I'm gonna go to this party, I'm gonna let my body go, I'm gonna you know, drop it like a thoughty, um, I'm gonna be myself, you know, et cetera. Um, and then I saw somebody else said it, it's to bust it means to have an orgasm. So whether, you know, not knowing, I guess the original etymology, the, this, the meaning of the word, it's what it means now, what it means in this day and age. It's what does it mean when Beyonce sings it to church girls or about church girls? And then lastly, um, I just wanna say regarding the lyrics, the, it, the lyrics do, do include irreverent curse words like the A word, and she's not referring to a donkey, okay, or a mule, but the A word and the MF word. And um, that's the, those two are repeated two or three times each. And then uh, lastly, um, couple, it's, this is repeated a couple of times, tig old, tig old biddies. And that you just, you know, I guess that's a dyslexic way of referring to woman's chest. Um, but you get the point, okay? <laughs> so that was what we kind of discussed last week. We, we discussed a lot. And the second hour, the second hour um, is optional for those of you who don't know, but the second hour is optional. And, um, and we had quite a li lively discussion. Uh, that, that portion is not recorded so that we can definitely talk openly and freely. Um, but we had a really good discussion um, and I hope we all learned a lot, um, but I really wanna get down to what we need to get out of this. Um, this, the, what we, what our aim is for this study, and that is to, to hold up church girl as an example 
if this is what Beyonce is telling church, what is defining is, it, let me start over. If this is how Beyonce is defining church girl, we need to hold that up. Okay, this is the world's description of some church girls, whatever that means. But, and it's like, no, we want to define it the way God defines church girl. And so what does that look like? What does that mean? Because I can say I'm a church girl, but I'm not Beyonce's kind of church girl, you know? Um, but is there some truth to what she's saying? Are there any of us, young, old, <laughs> or less young, let me say less young, but are there any of us who profess Christ struggling with still having our foot in the world to some degree, we may not be dropping it like a thoughty, you know, that may be an extreme um, picture of that, but are we, uh, do we have our feet, so to speak, one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the world? And we need to look at that because we need to always keep our, you know, work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And also, how are we uh, modeling Christ-like behavior in front of each other and in front, especially in front of the young ladies in our respective spheres of influence in our homes and our extended families at work, at church, in the community, are we reflecting Christ beyond just on Sunday morning? And that's what I, I hope, um, because ultimately we want to, as I said, point folks to Jesus. If, if, uh, if you're saved already genuinely a child of God, is, you know, saved blood bought by Christ, but you're struggling, we need to be there for one another. We need to help that sister, not, not judge her, not judge her in the sense of, you know, condemn her. We are allowed to judge, so to speak. We're, we are we are encouraged to judge things, but we'll we'll look at that, Lord willing. Um, uh, we're going to end with that point tonight. But our um, we are to hold each other accountable. We are to teach one another, and we can't. We're not doing as good of a job teaching if we're not saying, "Okay, do this," right? Holding up the Bible, do this, don't do that. And that the that is telling you tell, Beyonce telling us what you know that hey be yourself be free what is it fly that that nasty what is it I'm not going to read it again but you know fly that flag that nasty flag freely you know that's that's what the world is telling uh, now telling like I'm sorry who is Beyonce to tell church girls what they're allowed to do. On a Saturday night, knowing they got to go to church in, in the morning, as, as the uh, lyrics kind of say. So, um, and let me say, let me what Sherry said last last week, right before we ended the um, the recording from last week is, and I, I kind of said it, but I want to make sure it's clear. If if any of you that are within the sound of my voice are struggling not to be the church girl that Beyonce is talking about it, it being that kind of church girl don't stop going to church don't be afraid to reach out to older women in your congregation pastor's wife director of the women's ministry um, I think any of us here you know, we, we need to be willing to for somebody to reach out you can reach out to wisdom's table and send, send me a private message, um, you, again, you will be pointed to Christ. The finger pointing will be towards Christ, not towards you. But also be aware, we are going to give you, and, and each of us listening, we should be willing to boldly say, okay, take, take a, a younger sister struggling, a young church girl, take her and say, I love you enough to tell you the truth I'm not going to allow you to feel comfortable living a life where you've got one foot in and one foot out. And the reason is 
because it gives Jesus a black eye and you cannot, you know, be talking about church on Sunday and then Monday through Saturday, you know, you're, you're out living like the world and looking like the world. You have to make a choice and a loving, godly, wise sister in Christ will tell, tell another sister that in love by the direction of the Holy Spirit. Don't become, you know, church girl police, <laughs> okay? I mean, we really have to use wisdom and really have to, you know, feel confident that you're being led by the Holy Spirit in doing that. Um, and we have done, I think last year sometime, we did a whole series on how to help a hurting friend. And that this, this kind of thing falls under that. But, but church girls, let's keep going to church. Let's just keep crying out to the Lord, help me. Give me a clean heart. Draw me closer to you, Lord. Show me how to live. Send me an older woman that can, that can mentor me and help me. That's safe for me to, to um, be vulnerable with in terms of trying to get my life together and expressing that. That's so key. And, and ultimately, all of this is to give God the glory, to give Jesus Christ the glory. He's living and powerful. And we have to um, relate uh, to what's happening in the world. We can't put our head in the sand about it. We have to be aware of what's out there in the world and what our, our young uh, women are being exposed to. And then Lord, use me, use me to help where I can help. Okay, so the lie. So as I said, I think there is some truth behind the lyrics in terms of, and only in terms of, um, that there are uh, church going women who may struggle in some areas, whether it be, you know, in some, some degree of carnality and fighting it. And um, whether it's just out of a rebellious heart or they, you know, they're new babes in Christ and they're really struggling. I don't know how to stop this lifestyle that I've had all these years. I don't know anything else. Um, but the problem is, again, it's hypocrisy. We look like hypocrites. We, you know, and then, and we're in a post-Christian society and people are, you know, oh, look at all the, the, the Christians that are out there, um, pastors who are, uh, embezzling or they're having, um, you know, having uh, affairs or committing fornication or adultery. I mean, there's so much hypocrisy um, or what appears to be hypocrisy in the professing Christian church. And we don't want to be a part of that. Um, so that's why it's important. But now I don't know. Um, I don't know how many church girls, how many Christian women, young women, older women are, you know, truly uh, blood bought and are going in and, you know, deciding I'm going to drop it like a thotty going into a club or whatever. But I have seen some hints of women who lose their modesty outside of the church in certain uh, social settings or, you know, um, on their Facebook profiles or their, their social media profiles. Um, and it really does look like they have one foot in the spirit and a whole leg sticking in the world. Um, try, they're trying to live a life where they can do what they want. Gosh, darn it. I'm going to do what I want and still be in God's good graces because I'm going to go to church tomorrow and direct the choir or, you know, pass out, whatever, <laughs> take people, greet people and usher people to their seats or whatever it may be. And they're, um, and they think, okay, I've been washed. I'm good to go for the coming week because whatever I did last night in the club, I can do now. There are women who think like that. Um, but see, that's where part of the lie is. It could, because it's misguided. That way of thinking is, is just uh, lying to these misguided world lured girls um, that, that they've succumbed to, they've succumbed to this lie. So number one, the very first of the 10 commandments says, you shall have no other gods before me, right? So this means 
no other gods besides Almighty God, no other gods in addition to uh, him, and no other gods besides him. Okay, the God of the Bible is the only God, and he, and the first commandment is to uh, not have any, not, it's against idolatry. But if you feel, young church girl, that you need, you know, that Beyonce is somehow, you know, a better leader, you're a better leader than God through Christ Jesus or the Holy Spirit, there's a problem there. There is absolutely a problem. Beyonce, as awesome as she may be as a singer and a professional in her field, she is not God. She did not die for your sins. She can't do anything for you. And as a matter of fact, you're doing all for her because your, your money goes into her pocket. And what do you get back? What does she give you back? A pep talk maybe. Okay, and what kind of pep talk? Church girl, you know, you don't need anybody. You just do you. you, you you're entitled, this song kind of implies, you're entitled to do what you want because you've cried a lot of tears and you've moved a lot of mountains, which is, a, I think, a, a reference to the scripture to say, if you have, you know, if you have faith, you can say to this mountain, be ye moved and be removed to the sea. I'm not quoting it exactly, but... Um, so you're entitled for all the struggles and all the tears and that you and your girlfriends have gone through. And that's not, that's not, um, that's not God telling you that that's Beyonce telling you that, and she is not God. So as believers, we cannot be, um, in devoted service to the Lord and what he wants and to ourselves at the same time to ourselves and what we want, especially when what we want clearly violates what he wants. Does he want us going and dropping it like a thoughty? Does he want us to be twerking in front of any man but our husband? Uh, you know? No, of course he doesn't. Because we are to be, as, as we read, um, Lisa read in Titus 2, verses three through five, one of the things is, one of the things the older women are to teach the young one, teach the younger women to be discreet and chaste, modest and pure, and dropping it, you know, and all that, and even all the sexual innuendo in that song is the polar opposite to that. Um, so let's see, Luke 16, 13. Let's turn there. We're going to look at um, three or four scriptures. Luke 16, 13. And if you get there before I do, please read that one verse. Luke 16, 13. Somebody there? All right. Nobody's there? Modern technology and nobody's there. Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. Whoever, uh, whoever wants to read. Marcy, can you do that? Okay. So just 13? Yes, just 13. Okay, this is the NIV. No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Okay. And the King James says mammon, but, and I know the context here is money, but I think the principle can be extended to other things and it's basically coming down to you shall have no other gods before me you cannot have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom per se i'm just i'm just saying um it's like you with christ it's all in or or you're not in at all it's all in yes we're going to struggle i've been a christian since 1984 and i still struggle <laughs> to to uh, you know, keep myself in check about things. I still, I still, you know, go back to my worldly ways and some, and some things. I'm not in blatant sin, so don't go running telling Charles, like, ooh, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> um, but he's, he's aware of the things I still struggle with. Um, but, you know, some, and sometimes it's sins of omission and not just sins of commission, but we still struggle. Like, like the Apostle Paul said, he wrestles the, the, the flesh in him and the spirit in him. They wrestle and they fight and he feels like a wretch, 
but praise God, thank God there's Christ to help us through and to help us make those kinds of right decisions that glorify Christ and don't glorify us or some other human being like Beyonce. Um, the spirit of God and the spirit of the world are polar opposites, like I said, and therefore they are at war against each other. Let's turn to Romans 8. And if you get there before me, please read Romans 8, 6 through 7. I'm going to start calling on people. Romans 8, 6 through 7. Hi, this is April. Hi, oh, April. Hi, April. Hi. Uh, Romans 8, this is in the NIE, uh, 6 through 7. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Well, nor can it do so. Nor can it do so. That, <laughs> that is deep to me because it's not only that it won't, it can't. The, the carnal mind cannot yield itself to Christ. And that's where we need the Holy Spirit who wow. dwells in us. So, so it's, it's not just about, okay, I'm going to will myself, you know, that self-will, that self-determination. No, we need Christ determination operating in us. We need the Holy Spirit <laughs> determination because the flesh cannot do it by itself. The flesh can't do it at all. So we have to be not carnally minded, but, uh, but spirit minded. Uh, let's turn now to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Who can read that for us? 1 Corinthians 15, 33. This is from the New King James Version. Okay. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Okay, thank you. Did a little extra reading, but that's good. Context. <laughs> <laughs> Context. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Um, read that again, because in the you have the the NIV. Thea, you said. Oh, you said, I'm sorry. No, I was reading the um the New NASB. King James version. Yeah. Yeah. Did I say NIV? No, no, okay. I, you probably did not. I just uh, wanted you to read that again in your translation. Okay. Just verse 33. Okay. Okay. Do not be <laughs> deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. You're known by the company you keep, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. You're known by the company you keep. So that's just something else that we need to keep in mind. And there's, it, we go to the scripture so that nobody can say, boy, Laurel sure is, you know, those people at the wisdom's table sure are, mm -hmm. you know, the, the church girl police. And so, no, <laughs> we're just trying to point each other and rely on ourselves, uh, rely for, for us, on, on ourselves, but for ourselves, rely on the scripture. Second Timothy three. Um, 16, 15 through 17, even, but, um, uh, you know, the, the word of God is, is profitable. It's inspired by God and it's profitable for every area of life. Instruction and in righteousness, you know, re, uh, review all of that. That's why we point to the scriptures. So when you are talking with, when you're looking at yourself, don't look at Laurel or, you know, compare your life, turn your eyeballs inward and compare yourself to what the scriptures say. But when you're talking to another, another woman about these things and you're trying to help her, mentor her, teach her to rely on the scriptures for her guidance. Not because she likes you. I mean, that, that helps for her to open up, but you know, it, it, we have to rely on the scriptures mm -hmm. and, and it's scriptures like this that, that we point to to say, hey, don't get mad at me, get mad at God. This is what he says. Bad company, evil company corrupts good manners. Um, and then Galatians 5.17. Galatians 
Galatians 5, 17, just that one verse. And if you get there before I do, please start reading. Galatians 5, 17. I have it. Okay, Thea, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. How okay. far did you say? That that was it, just that okay. verse. Um, yeah, it's just another scripture that, that uh, reinforces the fact that you cannot, just because a Saturday night at the club is one day and then and the, the sun goes down and the, the moon rises and then the moon goes down and the sun rises doesn't it's a new day but it doesn't make you a new person you are the same person on saturday that you are on sunday and you and you cannot be at war within yourself if you call if you believe christ or if you want to believe christ because he washes all of us by his blood he we our sins are are washed if, if um you know if we accept uh, what he has done for us, but when we when we we cannot you have again straddle the fence here. That's what this is. That's what this is reinforcing. Um, so we have to make uh, make a choice in terms of how we're going to live our lives. If we profess Christ on Sunday, we need to be professing Christ all the rest of the days of the week and not just in our by our mouths, but in our attitudes and our behavior and our interactions and our relationships and how we dress, how we talk, um, what we do, what we listen to. It's, it's just, yes, we can have, we, we, the scriptures talk about liberty in some areas, but not to the point where you're dimming the light of Christ if you are truly a Christian, and also not to the point where it makes somebody else stumble. Um, and then the other part of the lie, I got just about eight minutes left. And the other part of the lie in this church girl song is, is when Beyonce, there's a lot of lies in it. Okay. <laughs> but really want to point out that she says repeatedly, nobody can judge me, but me. She says that repeatedly. This is, the, this is why I call it an anthem for church girl. Nobody can judge me but, but me. First of all, Christians can judge. And as I said earlier, not in the sense of, I'm sorry, I want to make sure, did, you, did somebody have a comment or? Okay. Not in the sense of doling out condemnation and punishment because that's not our place. We are not allowed, that's God's place. He's the one who, who judges and condemns or um, redeems, that's on him. But our judging as Christians comes in the sense, in the biblical sense of pointing out error for the sake of bringing about redemption for the glory of Christ. So we are called to judge righteously though. Not just like, ooh, why you do that? Why are you dropping it like a thotty? You need, ooh, something wrong with you. You know, girl, you need, you need to go, you know. That's not us. We, we need to be, uh, to hold each other accountable and not be afraid to, to, to call somebody out on their wrong, but it's, but not like we're in some holier than thou. Well, some of us may be holier than somebody else. We just have to have the right attitude of love. And we'll, we'll look at the scriptures um, for that, but the goal again is, and and when when we are judging, and um, the goal is reconciliation for that person, growth for that person, rescuing them, even if that's if that's the case. Hey, I need to help you bring back, bring you back to um, you know a closer walk with Christ because you're walking that that edge and you're going to fall over if you don't watch it. Um, so let's turn to, I told you there'd be a lot of scriptures, um, John chapter 7 and verse 24. And this again is, is judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. 
So we hear that a, a big reframe these days, you can't judge me, stop judging me. You're wrong for judging me. And I'm like, well, do you mean that judgmentally? <laughs> Why are you judging me for judging? <laughs> but apart from that, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So we are called to judge, but just to judge righteously. Then let's turn to Galatians 6, 1 and 2. And if you're there before I do, please read Galatians 6, 1 and 2. Okay, they say, uh, Galatians 6, 1, a brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual really got to tell them about it and kick them out of the church um, because, you know, how dare they stay in the church and sit in the pews. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot the these and thous. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll read it correctly. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So obviously that is not the condemn, uh, condemning judgment, but hey, we need to you know, help you point this out to you, hold you accountable, but do it in meekness, uh, in gentleness and in love because any one of us could be tempted as well. We've got to make sure we don't stumble. Um, and that, that is the goal. So one of the biggest dangers of, of the church girl song is that it upholds this devilish idea that we are the masters of our own selves. And we decide what's right and what's wrong for ourselves. That's a big, huge lie. Nobody, this is part of the lie. Nobody can tell me what to do. Nobody can tell me what's right or what's wrong for me. But the reality is, so there's the lie, right? The reality is, each of us will be judged. Absolutely each of us. And notice I put it in the first person plural, not just Beyonce's church girls, but each of us will be judged, including church girls. Okay. And we will be judged by God. We will be judged. Each of us will give an account for how we believed, how we thought, how we behaved, how we resisted, how we succumbed to the pressures of the world to be like Beyonce or to be the kind of woman Beyonce is telling us to, to be. We will be judged for indulging in this life, in this life in front of Almighty God and our he Heavenly Father. And he will assign and establish judgment upon us accordingly, according to our works. That's for Christian and it's for non-Christians. It's just different judgment, okay? A great white throne judgment um, is for non-believers. But it's whether we are truly saved or whether we're, you know, whether you're lost. Each human being is going to be judged. So for, for this refrain of nobody can judge me but me, you can do it to a catchy beat. You can be a talented singer. You can be physically beautiful, you can be popular, you can be rich, you know, you can have all that, but you are wrong to spread this lie to the silly women that Second Timothy uh, 3, 6, and 7 talks about, and lying, sneaking into houses and taking captive silly women, the King James says silly women, take captive silly women laden with sins. And, and, and sneak in and, and, and uh, kidnap, <laughs> kidnap them, basically. I don't mean literally, but metaphorically. Um, so we also are called to uh, righteously judge one another, but let us not be sucked into this lie and let us help each other and, and recognize, hey, there are women that are doing Beyonce mass not just women, but people, young people, and uh, maybe even older. They've got this, this Beyonce mass and Bayism, you know, like a, a Bay religion. This is, this is real. And we, and even if 
and I, I see my time. But even if we say, well, I, you know, I'm not really into Beyonce's music or I am into her music, but I just, you know, filter out, you know, what's, what's wrong. Hey, that's fine. And that's good. And I'm glad it doesn't make you stumble, but Titus two verses three through five call older women to teach the younger women so that the word of God will not be blasphemed. Are we when women of God, are we, um, recognizing and teaching wisdom about these things to the younger women in our lives, like that passage in Titus tells us to do. So I'm going to stop here. Um, if it's um, the one minute after, but uh, we'll, we'll continue Lord willing next week. I'll talk about the warning related to church girl. I've already get, talked to, <laughs> warned about a lot of things, but we'll get more into that and read some more scriptures in that regard. Um, and just, just so for those of you who are new or haven't been in a while, you can stay on. I, I am here for another hour for uh, open discussion about this topic or any topic you want to ask about from a biblical perspective. I'm happy to stay on for another hour um, to do that. But I know some of you are on the East Coast or Midwest, uh, wherever you are, feel free to drop off. I do want to close in prayer real quick. But uh, you can you can drop off after that or stay on um, the more the merrier. But I know, you know, time constraints. All right. Uh, let's let's uh, close in prayer. Father, I just I just really want um, to make sure that I'm clear that I'm to make sure that I'm sharing uh, wisdom that is based upon the truth of your word. Father, uh, please help us lord help us to discern and, and be aware of where um anybody that you may put in our lives or uh, across our path that that may that may be struggling or maybe stumbling into this kind of anthem that uh performers and celebrities and popular uh people in our world and our society you know they kind of make an anthem out of uh basically forgetting you of, of thinking that they are the judge of their own selves, that nobody can tell them what to do. Even Christians, even people that are truly Christians and they still believe that. Lord, we just really need your help. This, this world is dark and we're trying to shine your light, Father. Help us to do that. Help us to shine the light of Christ in our, in our little spheres of influence that, that you have put us in and you have called us to. We um, help to um, help us to, what am I trying to say, Lord? Help us shine our lights brighter, help to, uh, to cleanse or remove or point out to us where we need to be wiser in any of these areas so that we can be uh, equipped and ready to help each other. We just uh, devote this time to you. We thank you, Father, for this time. And um, we do want to grow in your word and in wisdom. And we thank you that you give wisdom generously. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Amen. amen. Yeah. Good night, ladies. Good night, ladies. Good, Good night, night, everyone. Good night, I'm, Good night. I'm here. April, can you stay on for a minute? Yeah, I'm going to um, switch to my cell phone so I can walk while we're talking. Okay, sure, yeah, sure, sure. So I'm going to go out and come back in. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining, Yvonne. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, and nice thank you me. for allowing me to, to come on. Oh, of um, course. I yeah. loved it. I was curious, did you have four scriptures, or were you, um, was there more that you were unable to cover? Um, um, I covered all that I planned to cover okay. for tonight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that hour goes by so quickly. Yeah, it um, does. Yeah, um, but, you know, for the other topics, the warning, I got scriptures for that, the opportunity, the heart, the duty, the goal. I mean, there's scriptures, um, you know, I, I really wanted to really want what I teach to be based upon what what the say the Lord and not, you know, from his word yes. and not, yeah, from just me. But yeah, yeah. Well, thank yes. you so much. Given uh, just a lot to... Um, to kind of think on and, and to study on. And I, I'm looking at these uh, lyrics and I just, I see more there that I'm just like, mm, um, yeah. I know, <laughs> my goodness. How do you spell, um? Mm. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Talking about love on me, I'm like thinking that's not really love. Um, no. Right. Not really love. It's, it's, it's not. Yeah. It's not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's but really the world would have you believe that that's what love is, or that's how you get love, or, um, and I think there's a, a that that's a, a point that's often confused um, mm-hmm. in the world. You know, people like the world likes to mix that up. Um, yeah, it's, it's like anything that God intends for good. Mm. You know, it, it the world perverts it. Yes. You know, it's really the, the enemy, the devil, mm-hmm. perverts yeah. what God created to be beautiful, you know. Um, but yeah, he perverts it. And, but then Yvonne, you know, and I know, I don't, this is the first time I'm meeting you. So I don't know, no, like you, I know you know this, but I have a feeling you know this, <laughs> that um, it, see, it has seeped into the, the professing Christian church. This stuff is mm-hmm. seeped into the church. Where, you know, we have, we, I don't like to say they, they, they. So when I say we, or when I use the first person plural, when I talk about church girls or people that struggle, that's why, because I want to make sure that I'm always relating and, and keeping myself in check, you know, per Galatians 6, you know, 1 and 2. But what I'm trying to say is um, we, there are, we see it in, in within the Christian church where the world's way of defining love, for instance, is it's more about the the material love, the what can you buy me? Because that's part of what the song says, right? What what give me a blank check, I think is one of the lyrics. Mm-hmm. Um it's about what I can get from you. And so let me show off my body. This is what I have to offer. And so I'll dress provocatively in church. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I want a Christian husband, huh? It's what transactional. They, 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 the world will have you believe that it's transactional. Right. Uh, and, and it's not, it's certainly not the, I'm going to say not any of the kind of loves. And I, I mean, I, I can't list them offhand. The first one that comes to mind is agape love, but um <laughs> That none of the loves that I know of are, are transactional, but that you're right. That's how right. this is portraying that. Yeah, that's this that's exact transactional is exactly what we see in the lyrics to that song. Mm. You know, if you if what is it? Well, I, I don't need to repeat it, it's just foul. <laughs> but um absolutely it's it's seeped into the church, and that's a huge concern, and that's where walking the talk so that the word of God will not be blasphemed is so important. It won't be cheapened, you know, it won't be maligned. It won't be ill spoken of. It's, it's not like the, the people, the girls in church that dress provocatively or the guys in church that, that they can dress provocatively too, or, you know, behave in a certain way that's, that's carnal within church, but it's, it's, um, it misses the point and it doesn't point to Christ at all. And so you're sitting in the church pew and you may be, you know, um, serving in the church in some kind of way, but what does it, what do they see Christ or do do they see Christ in you, dear sister, or do they see Beyonce in you, dear sister? When they look at you and they see you and they observe your, your, how you talk, what you talk about, how you dress, um, you know, it, do the people see Christ in you or do they see Beyonce in you? And that's, and I, I'm, I'm more concerned about what's happening in the church than in the world, but I'm concerned about what's happening in the world because we want every, you know, as many people to get saved as possible. Hi, Laurel and Marcy. Are you still recording? Uh, yes, I can. Recording I, this? Oh, okay. I, I can want to. I, I can stop. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it because um, you oh, know, okay. I want, I, but I, because last week's comments in the second hour, the first hour were the comments I had, I allowed more comments, but I wanted to <laughs> stay more focused on uh, getting through my, getting through my lesson tonight. But I wish that last week was, was recorded too, because everybody made such wonderful comments and made some, um, you know, had great insights and contributed some, some, uh, great uh, considerations in our in our topic. 
Um, but if anybody, usually I do not record the second hour because I want okay. everyone to speak freely if you want to share something. So I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you, Marcy. <laughs> <laughs>